Algebra 1, number 2.10a, we're going to talk about number properties and proofs in this unit. This is about axioms and fields. Commutative, associative, distributive, identity, inverse, all these properties, they're all number properties. We use number properties in algebra because they let us write equivalent expressions. n plus 2, in parentheses, plus 3, can be written as n on the outside with the 2 plus 3 on the inside, that would be easier to add, wouldn't it? And that's because the associative property allows us to do this. Well, some number properties are accepted as true, and we assume they're true. These are called axioms. So, yeah, we can call these axioms, okay? That's what an axiom is, when it's true. Some number properties need proof before they can, we can say they're true. We call those theorems. We use axioms to prove the theorems are true. Axioms get us to the theorems, okay? Now remember to check this video's description for links to similar and helpful videos, okay? In case you're confused. When number properties are true, we call them axioms. And we've learned the different number systems. You remember my nesting dolls from a couple of videos ago? These are like little Russian dolls and they open up in the middle right here. See, and you can take the top off. Well, natural numbers would fit inside of the whole numbers. It, the whole numbers include the natural numbers. And if we took the top off of this one, we could take the whole numbers and natural numbers and put them inside of the integer one. We could take the top off of this one and fit these three inside of the rational numbers. That's fractions and decimals. And they all can fit inside of real numbers. That's all of these included, okay? So these are the number systems. When a number system works in a property, an axiom, we call that axiom, that property, a field axiom. A field is a set of numbers or objects and two operation signs. So this is a field. You want to know what a field is? Here's a field. That was simple, wasn't it? So this would be the commutative property, wouldn't it be? The field axiom would be a plus b equals b plus a. And this works for rational numbers. And it even works for natural numbers and whole numbers, right? Okay, so let's take a look at this. The commutative property of addition and multiplication is a field axiom for all rational numbers. Now, it's also a field axiom for real numbers, because that includes rational numbers. But we're doing rational numbers in this one, okay? So the commutative property of addition says a plus b is going to equal b plus a. If we add 2 plus 3, it's going to equal 3 plus 2. And it works for multiplication. 2 times 3 is going to equal 3 times 2, isn't it? Well, the rational numbers include all the natural numbers, which are like 1, 2, 3, etc. All the whole numbers, well, that's natural numbers with a 0. All integers, that's negative and positive numbers. And... Rational numbers include all the fractions and decimals. So, for addition, if we were to plug in these rational numbers, these fractions, instead of the a and the b, we'd get 1 fifth plus 2 fifth, those are both rational numbers, is going to equal 2 fifths plus 1 fifth. And this is true. This works, doesn't it? So this property is true and it works for all rational numbers. And for multiplication, We've got 1 fifth times 2 fifth. Well, that'll equal 2 fifths times 1 fifth. So that's true for rational numbers. So the commutative properties are a field axiom for rational numbers because they're true. See? It fits. It works. Now let's look at the inverse property of addition and multiplication. It's not a field axiom for all natural numbers. Now remember, natural numbers is like the smallest group. It's only 1, 2, and 3, etc., 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. But it doesn't have any negatives. It doesn't even have 0. It doesn't have any fractions or decimals. It's only these counting numbers without a 0. So the inverse property of addition and multiplication is not a field axiom for the natural numbers because let's take a look at addition. For all numbers a, there's an inverse negative a. Oh, that ruined it. Natural numbers aren't negative, so it won't work for natural numbers. How about for multiplication? All non-zero numbers a, there's a multiplicative inverse 1 over a. Natural numbers aren't fractions, so this is not a field axiom for natural numbers. Now, it works for rational numbers because they can be fractions and negative, can't they? And it would work for real numbers because that includes all rational numbers. But it doesn't work for natural numbers, so it's not a field axiom 
for natural numbers. And the commutative property of addition and multiplication is a field axiom for rational numbers because it is true and it does work. So do you see what a field axiom is? And the field is a set of numbers or objects and two operation signs, see, plus, plus, or sub multiplication, multiplication, that makes the field, see? All right, so we're going to continue this conversation on into the next video. So they're really kind of linked. So I hope you go to 2.10b and see the rest of this lesson, okay? And I hope this was helpful and I hope you now understand because I know this is a very confusing subject, okay? I'll see you there. Bye.